Hello everybody. I am going to make a video which will demonstrate the first 10 projects of Snap Circuits Arcade. Now I had already made a video that introduces this kit, but now I am going to do separate videos which cover between 10 to 20 projects in each. This first video is going to cover the first 10 projects. So I am not going to show how they are built for time's sake, but I definitely will show you how each project works. First, we have project one. This project is very simple, and it is called Red Light. Now, something I did not tell you in the intro video is that there are numbers listed next to the part showing you which level they go on. The first, the LED, red LED and battery holder, for instance, go on the first level, while the slide switch and three snap wire go on the top, on the second level. And then the parts themselves are numbered. The switch is S1 and the LED is D1. The grid is numbered and lettered as well. Red light simply involves turning on the slide switch and then you got a nice red LED. Now my camera does not pick it up very well even though it's shooting in 4K so please pardon me for that. Mr. Snappy here says that gives you a basic principle with how circuits work but something that you should take note of is that these LEDs are specially built with resistors that limit the current flowing through them. Under normal circumstances, the LEDs may be damaged by direct current passing through them. Another important and interesting fact about LEDs or light emitting diodes is that they only allow current to flow in one direction. So if you place this LED, for instance, in the opposite direction, it will not light up. Once you are done with this project, simply turn the switch off. Now I recommend that you remove the batteries when you are not using the kit because they could still use energy even if the circuit is turned off. There's project one. Now here is project two. Project two is called lights. This one uses all three LEDs that come with this set. You have the D1, D2, and D10 LEDs. Now you may notice that the D10 LED is labeled yellow and red. Well, you're gonna find out real soon in this project and the next one. But without further ado, I'm going to turn on the slide switch. All three LEDs light up, and you can see that they are red, green, and yellow, respectively. Now, Miss Snappy says that LEDs, which convert electrical energy into light, have color, which depends on the characteristics of the material that is used in them. For some reason, the green LED isn't too bright, but what can we do? Project 3 is reverse lights. What they wanted me to do was switch every main component, the switch, the two snap wire, and all three LEDs, so that they are now in the opposite directions. And then I'm going to turn on the slide switch. And let's see what happens. Hmm, that's weird. The D1 and D2 LEDs do not come on, but the D10 LED does. And it is red instead of yellow. That is because D10 is actually a bicolor LED. And it has two separate LEDs, one red and one yellow, inside of it. 
and they are also wired in opposite directions. So when this is placed in one direction, the yellow LED will light up, but when it is placed in the on the in the opposite direction, the red LED will come on. The D1 and D2 LEDs are single lamps, so they will not light up when they are placed in the wrong direction. When you turn them around, they come back on. And that is Project 3. Project 4 is, like I hinted in my intro video for this kit, the box cover circuit. And it uses all but a few of the components in this kit. So, you're going to get to say almost all of them at work at one time. This project is called Arcade. And, well, all these parts are going to be working at once. I am not going to explain how they work until I get the projects that are dedicated to them. So, with that said, I will show you how Arcade works. You turn on the slide switch. And you will see that the programmable fan lights and the red and green LEDs also light dimly while the microprocessor displays two zeros. But there's more to that. You will hit the A button on the S8 selector module and this will change the ones digit. And then I will hit the B button and you will see what will happen. Now you can see my name is input on the fan. And I'll tell you how I did that in the video, in the project dedicated to that. Here we go. Now the display changes, and you will also notice that in a little bit, hopefully, the disco motor will begin to spin. Well, the speaker makes noises. There we go. Now, when you hit the S2 button, the yellow LED comes on. The bicolor LED is aligned so that the yellow LED lights up when current is passed through it. Release the press switch and the LED turns off. Now with the other components in action, the red and green LEDs are even dimmer. But there you have it with Project 4. Now Project 5 uses the same circuit as the previous one, but you're going to see what I will do differently in this one. Turn on the slide switch. Many of the components start up, like the LEDs and fan. Now always be careful of the motor because it can hurt if you come into contact with it. Instead of selecting game one, like I did with the previous project, I'm going to select game two. And watch what happens. The patterns change more quickly. The random actions of the various components controlled by the microprocessor, the speaker, and disco motor, change more quickly. Other components like the programmable fan and LEDs are not controlled by the S8 module. Alternatively, you can select game 3. You'll have to turn the slide switch on and off again to reset the circuit, but watch what happens now. The MC display switches even more quickly.
disco motor. And speaker. Project 6 is called New Pattern Arcade. And now, it is really hard to know the difference, but... And this is best in a dark room, so actually I'm going to shut my curtains. Now let's say I replace this disco cover with the other one because there are two now the pattern is bigger yet the individual dots are smaller and they're spread out more evenly as well the next project number seven which is arcade dice actually does require use of this circuit, even though I may have said in the previous one that that was the last. This is one of many actual games that you can play using the Snap Circuits kit. What you do after turning on the slide switch is you press the A button to select game four and then hit the B button and the display will say go. Now you will hold down the C button and the digits will flash on the display. Now you are pretending you are rolling dice. You can see that the lights on the disco motor also flash dimly. Let go of the C button, and now two random numbers between one and six will appear on each side of the display. In this case, you can pretend that you rolled a five and a three, and then you can roll again. Now, if you roll doubles, in this case 6-6, six, six, the disco motor spins and the speaker plays a winning tune. I'm going to do it again, and hopefully you can see it. Three and a two. Because I don't think I caught the motor spinning the last time. There we go. To make the game more fun, you can play with one or more other players. And here are the instructions for if you want to... Uh, play this game. Project 8 looks simple and it is called the Word Fan. For this project we will be using the programmable fan. Now this doesn't explain how to input messages on it. That will be explained in Project 15 in the next video. But for Project 8 we are simply going to turn on the slide switch and then the fan will light up. Now this fan is very interesting. It has LEDs built into its blades which light up and can display letters or numbers or even shapes when they are spinning at a high rate of speed. And you can input several different messages in there at one time. I just put a 9 for testing purposes, I think. And then the second message is my full name. I was able to fit my full name on there. Oops, that's not good. You gotta be very careful when you're around me, fan. Now project nine is eerily similar to project eight, but you may notice that the fan is now mounted in the opposite direction. And this project is called just the fan. But why is that? Well, you'll see. Turn on the slide switch. The fan spins, but it displays no messages. Why is that? That is because, according to Miss Snap A, the fan, the voltage going to the fan is reversed. First, first, as I said before, current cannot travel through an LED both ways, but it can travel through the fan like that. So that's why the fan works even when its position is reversed while the messages themselves cannot be displayed. Project 10 goes into depth about the disco motor 
and this project is called Disco Ball. To operate it, we simply turn on the slide switch. Now, I know it's dark, but this will be the best setting for the last project of this video. What we need to do is put this plastic shaft, and it has a half circle end, a semicircle end, so you have to be extra precise when putting it in. I know it's hard to see, but then I'm going to put one of the disco covers on the motor, too. All right, now... Let's turn it on. And look at that. But hey, look up at the ceiling. You have a pretty awesome pattern. The cover on the motor re diffuses the light from the three different LEDs. The red, green, and blue LEDs. And it scatters it so that it creates an awesome pattern or light show. Once again, as I hinted, it is best to view these patterns in a dark room. You have the best effects.